Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So this package just came in the mail about 10 minutes ago, and so I'm going to open it up in front of you guys, and we're going to look at it together. So here we have the new Ambernic RG351M. Now as you know, I'm a big fan of the RG351P, so I'm pretty excited about this unboxing. In particular, I'm interested to see whether or not this device is worth the extra upgrade cost from an RG351P, or if it's worth it if you don't have either of the devices. So we have a standard box here, nothing special. One of the big differentiating factors of this device is that it has built-in Wi-Fi for online sparring, as you can see here. And then obviously it has the metal shell. Other than that, all the technical specifications are exactly like the RG351P. All right, so let's have a look at this thing. Inside the box, you're gonna get a USB-C cable, as well as some instructions. We're not even gonna look at those. And so here we are. So Ambernick sent me the matte black version to review, but they also have a space gray option. So first impressions when it's in my hands, Honestly, it looks and feels a lot like my RG350M. I have the exact same color for that one. And so in that sense, it does feel a lot like it. It's kind of this mixture of my 351P, which I've been just using nonstop for about three or four months now, and then the 350M. And you can see on both sides, it has like a soft plastic covering. And I think that's to help with the Wi-Fi signal. Overall, you know, honestly, it just reminds me a lot of my 351P in terms of ports and everything else. Now the thing about these metal devices is that when you push on the buttons, it's a different experience than pushing on a plastic device. It just feels more solid, like when you push down on the D-pad, when you push down on the buttons, you really know you're pushing down on it. I can't really explain it very well, but if you've ever held a 350P or any other metal device, you probably know what I'm talking about. It just has this kind of more premium, singular feel to it. So booting it up here, you see that they're using the same modified MULEC firmware that they were using previously on the 351P. But to be honest, there's been so many awesome changes with custom firmware for the 351P, I'm more interested in seeing whether or not the other ones are going to work. So this is annoying, but the QC sticker covers the SD card on all these devices, and it's really hard to get off. If anybody has any tips on how to get these off easily, please let me know, because honestly, I usually just hand it off to my wife, and she uses her fingernails to get it off. Okay, so pulling out the original SD card here, you can see it's just a generic 64 gig micro SD card. So I'm going to put in my 128 gig Arc OS firmware here. And beautiful. I'm so happy that it works perfectly. I wasn't expecting any sort of big change, but it's just happy to have that confirmation. And you can see here the Wi-Fi already connected because I already had my settings put in there. Okay, so let's compare some weights here. So the original RG351P is 6.7 ounces or 190 grams. Now this new 351M weighs 9.3 ounces or about 265 grams. So almost 30% heavier than the original plastic version. So let's test out Netplay, make sure the Wi-Fi works. I'm gonna use my RGB 10 here because they both run ArcOS and I only have one 351P ArcOS SD card. So I'm gonna use two different devices to run ArcOS. They have to be running the same version of RetroArc, the same RetroArc core and the same game. So I'm gonna pull up Contra here on the NES and we're gonna test it out. So you get into the RetroArc menu and then you go over to Netplay and then you just select host and then start Netplay host. And then once it's connected, you go onto the other device, you go back into Netplay and then you scan for hosts. Now, because I'm on the same Wi-Fi with both, it should show a local host down at the bottom. And if it doesn't show it immediately, just refresh the host list. And there it is, local anonymous, and you can see it's running the same core in the same game. You press A and then it just connects. And there we go, let's go ahead and start a two player game here. And it's going to show the exact same thing on both screens. And look at that. So the RGB 10 is player 2 and the 351M is player 1. And I plan on doing another Netplay video, just a generic one, because there are some nuances to it and we'll get into that later. Okay, so I've already mentioned that the 351M reminds me of my 350M, so let's look at those as a comparison. Obviously they have a completely different chipset, different screen size, and different operating system, 
but let's look at the physical parts first. So you can see here, obviously, the 350M has an HDMI out, which I really miss on the 351P, but I do love the volume knob on the 351 devices. On the bottom, you can see that the 350M has two different SD cards, one for firmware and one for storage. And then lining them up, you see that the 350M is significantly taller than the other one, and that's because it has a 4x3 screen. You know, in terms of width, the 351M is just a little bit wider, but it's really not that noticeable. So overall, the 350M feels like a just bigger device, and that's because of that 4x3 screen, which honestly is really great for classic games. But the reality is, I really haven't been touching my 350M lately, because I really love the firmware and the operating system that is found on the 351P, and by extension now, the 351M. When it comes to a screen comparison, yes, I do think that the 350M is a better screen, just because it's 640 by 480, so it's higher resolution, and it's in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, which is just better suited for a lot of old console games. And you can see here, the saturation is actually a little bit better on the 350M. The darks are a little bit darker, the colors seem a little bit truer. So overall, I think that there's no comparison. The 350M is a better screen. And this is something I've come to terms with over the past couple months, is that all the other things that come with the 351 devices, online play, retro achievements, custom firmware, and a better chipset, all of those things overcome the screen issues that I have with the 351 devices. So let's compare the plastic and the metal versions of the 351 series. Physically, I can't really tell a difference when it comes to the I.O. Everything is the same. I really do wish they had put HDMI out on the 351M, because honestly, there's just not that many characteristics that differentiate these two devices. So when it comes to features between these two devices, not including gameplay here, the only differences I can really tell are that metal shell and how that feels in the hand and how those buttons feel when you're pressing down on metal, and then the internal Wi-Fi chip. Now full disclosure, I was lucky enough to get an internal Wi-Fi chip on my plastic device, and so because of that it's not a big draw for me. But for you, if you're using that Wi-Fi dongle all the time, or you haven't bought a device yet and you really do want to have online play like retro achievements and things like that, then maybe the 351M is a better Better price point for you. Alright, so let's get into gameplay. Let's actually play some games and see how it feels. I mean, I don't know how many times I can say these devices just feel really great. I love the Ambernick buttons. I love the feel of everything. It has this classic retro style feel to it. You know, the buttons are just a little bit mushy and they remind me a lot of a classic Nintendo controller. And to me, that's a big win. And I have to admit that I have some sort of joy in the fact that I can just grab my old SD card from my 351P and plug it directly into my 351M, and all those tweaks I've been doing over the past several months are immediately available on this brand new device. You can see me here, I'm playing Doom 4 Vanilla, which is basically a version of Doom that runs on the 2016 version of Doom's assets. It's a really cool mix of classic and modern Doom. Or you can see here, I'm just rocking Half-Life. Like, how cool is that, you know? And because I have to test Mario 3 on every device ever, here I am playing it, and honestly, it's great. This is the moment where that metal shell really shines, because the buttons just feel so responsive and tactile when you're pushing down on them, because you're pushing down and you're meeting with metal instead of plastic. And I've mentioned that I have a hard time explaining this, but honestly, it just makes you feel like you're more in tune with the device itself, because that metal feedback really does make a difference. Here I am with the Mario 64 port, and I have to say this in 60 frames per second, and on this device with a metal case like that, feels like a just super premium experience. I don't know if anybody has had a better version of Mario 64 than this. And I have to hand it to Amber Nick here, this is really premium build quality. I mean, with the exception of like a PS Vita, it doesn't get any better than this. The only negative I can really say is the fact that the 351P also had a very premium feel to it. Even though it was made out of plastic, it was the same kind of thing. It was just kind of this seamless integration of really good hardware quality. And that's not a negative to the 351M, but it does make it a less compelling argument to buy the 351M. The difference between the original 350 and then the 350M that came out several months later was huge. It was a completely different device. This is just a metal version of the same device that we've had available for the past four months. Okay, testing out the Wi-Fi chip here, just making sure I can't hear anything when I'm connected to something. So you can see here I'm scraping images, and I don't hear anything. Not a peep. And that's pretty awesome. Honestly, I have no idea how they got that to work, and I'm really not interested in opening up this device just yet, because it's literally like 15 minutes old at this point. Uh, but I will probably open it up and take a look later on. 
And just in case you were wondering, yes, you can charge while using the internet. You can see here I'm charging as well as using the Wi-Fi. Okay, so wrapping up here, this RG351M out of the box is very impressive. I really like this metal shell. It feels nice in the hands, and I really do like the sensation of playing on a metal device like this. I think that the internal Wi-Fi chip is an awesome move. I wish that they had kept it in the 351P, but I'm happy to see it here in the 351M. But in all honesty, this device is $140 right now. You can get a 351P for $100 or less. And I'm not really convinced that a metal shell and Wi-Fi is worth $40. If I was playing my 351P and someone said, hey, for $40, I'll turn that into metal and you can use internal Wi-Fi without having to use a Wi-Fi dongle, I would probably tell them to go fly a kite. But if you've never bought one of these devices before and you want to make sure you get the best of the best, this is it. I personally just don't think it's worth it to take a $100 device and then spend an additional $140 to get another one that's metal. So is it worth the purchase? Yes. Is it worth the upgrade? Probably not. Is it worth the price difference? I also would say probably not. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I'll do a full review soon, probably in about a week or two after I've really had some time with the device, but I just wanted to get this unboxing and these initial impressions out to you in order to help you make your own buying decision. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. We'll see you next time. Happy gaming.